King John has gone down in history as the worst king that England ever had, and he narrowly held onto his throne in 1215 by signing Magna Carta, the Great Charter, cutting his power to a mere shadow of what it had once been. He was the great grandson of William the Conqueror, who'd seized the kingdom in 1066 after defeating the last Saxon ruler, King Harold, at the Battle of Hastings. Time to meet the ancestors, for we cannot understand King John without knowing something about them. Between Christmas 1066, when William was crowned at Westminster Abbey, and John's death in 1216, England had six kings in the intervening 150 years. The first three were the Norman kings, William II or William Rufus and Henry I being sons of the Conqueror. King Stephen is a kind of hybrid, being the king from Blois in France. Henry II, Richard the Lionheart and King John were the first three Plantagenet kings. Stephen and his three successors were all descended from the Conqueror. William Rufus never married and was mysteriously shot dead by a crossbow bolt in the New Forest in Hampshire while hunting. He was succeeded by his younger brother, Henry I, who married Edith, the daughter of Malcolm III, King of Scots, by his wife, St. Margaret, the great-great-granddaughter of Edmund Ironside, possibly murdered by King Canute in 1017. Edmund was the son of Ethelred II, the Unready. Henry I was survived in 1135 by his sole heir, his daughter Matilda, the widow of the Holy Roman Emperor Henry V. She'd married Geoffrey Plantagenet, Count of Anjou, a province in western France. Their son became King of England as Henry II in 1154, and he married Eleanor of Aquitaine, heiress of this large duchy in southwest France, centered on Bordeaux. Eleanor had inherited Aquitaine from her father, Duke William X. Henry II and his father, Geoffrey of Anjou, had already made themselves Dukes of Normandy and Counts of numerous French provinces in northwest France. Eleanor's marriage to King Louis VII of France had been annulled. Louis had been reluctant to part with his ex-wife, Duchy of Aquitaine, so her husband, Geoffrey, conquered it. Henry II died in 1189, having had several children by Eleanor. The eldest, also called Henry, known as the Young King, died in 1183. Henry II was succeeded in England and in his French provinces by his second son, Richard, better known as the Lionheart for his military skills as a crusader and as a warlord in France. But Henry II's third son, Geoffrey, married Constance, heiress to the Duchy of Brittany. Geoffrey died in 1186, but not before he had fathered Arthur, Duke of Brittany. King John was Duke Arthur's uncle, and he certainly murdered his nephew, who was his prisoner in Falaise Castle in about 1203 or 4. Some people even said that John strangled the youth with his own hands. On his deathbed in 1199, Richard the Lionheart nominated his younger brother John as King of England in preference to his nephew Arthur of Brittany, whose claim was better as the only son of the third son of Henry II. John was the fourth son. But John was 32 in 1199, and Arthur was a ten-year-old. As an adult, John was the better bet, particularly as the King of England was now faced by a new and wily French king, Philip II, who was keen to expel the English from France. Out of sequence, we now come to Stephen of Blois, King Stephen between 1135 and 1154. He was the son of Adela, daughter of William the Conqueror, and Stephen Henry, Count of Blois, 
Mow and Shatt. There had never been a Queen Regnant in England or anywhere else in Europe when Henry I died in 1135. In his lifetime, the old king had got promises from the nobility of England that they would choose his daughter Matilda, but when it came down to it, they chose Stephen, who presided over an English civil war known as the Time of Troubles. A year before his death, 1153, the year in which his son Eustace had died, Stephen made a treaty with Henry Plantagenet, nominating Henry as the next king, and the first Plantagenet took the throne as Henry II in 1154. These interlocking family links, together with all the others before King Stephen until the present day, can be found in Blood Royal, written by my excellent friend and historian, the late Charles Mosley. This book was published in 2002 for Queen Elizabeth II's Golden Jubilee by the Manoral Society of Great Britain, and we still have a few copies left. Thank you.